Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about lifestyle habits that I have implemented in my life that make me happier, healthier, and just overall make me feel good on a regular basis. I feel like fall is a great time to start these habits. You don't have to wait for the start of a new year or the start of a new week even. So in this video, I'm just going to talk through some habits that I've implemented and then also some of my top tips for implementing new habits. And if you guys have any more to add, then make sure to leave them in the comments below. That would be amazing. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. And so without further ado, let's just start with some of the habits that I've implemented. So first things first is in the morning. So I'm definitely not a morning person. I wish I had a better morning routine in place, but that is just not me. However, in the morning, there are a couple things I always do that I really think make a big difference in my day. The first one is I always make my bed. And I think that this just sets your day up for success. I think that, you know, you're seeing your room all nice and tidy and it just makes it feel more clean and appealing and it stops you from getting back into bed, which realistically is the best part. And I'm sure you've heard that over and over again, but it really does make a difference. The next one in the morning is a consistent skincare routine. This is definitely something that's kind of newer to me. I, you know, wash my face, whatever, but now I use like a solid line of products that work really well for my skin and for what I want and what I need and I think that having those things just help me to kind of feel refreshed in the morning and I feel more put together because I have spent the time you know putting on these skincare products and making myself feel good and hydrated and ready for the day. The next habit that really just makes a world of a difference is planning your meals. So I plan out every single one of my meals every two weeks because I go grocery shopping every two weeks. So planning those out that far in advance just makes sure that I get the ingredients that I need for everything and it limits the amount that I waste as well. Like I only have enough food really for those two weeks. Granted, at the end of the two weeks, I do tend to start to run out of food, but I've kind of planned for that in the way that I make my meals. So like the first week of meals will often be like more um, home cooked, you know, ingredient base, lots of produce, lots of fresh things. And then the second week will be more like things I have frozen in the freezer, things that just don't go off as quickly, like that sort of thing. It also means that I kind of alternate the weeks that I am cooking a bunch. So like my heavy cooking week is usually like that produce week, that first week after I go grocery shopping. And then the week after is usually a little bit more chill. And also doing this, obviously things can change, but just having those meals already planned out and figured out just gives me so much more motivation as well because I'm not sitting there being like, oh, what do I want for dinner tonight? Like, what do I want to cook? Because I've already gotten it written down and I know that if I don't have that or if I don't have one of the meals, maybe that's like within the next few days, like I definitely have some flexibility there. But if I don't have that meal, then it's like that food is going to go bad. And so I've already got that figured out. It takes the stress away from having to pick out something so that you can just get it, make it, eat it, and be done. My next habit or trend or thing that I do to just improve my life is I take dance classes. So I just think that taking workout classes, dance classes, whatever it is, having a very specific time that you have to show up somewhere, especially if you actually have to pay for it as well, it holds you accountable, it means that you're going and you're getting it done, and it also provides like a social aspect, which for me, I really like. I think that it's nice just to be around other people because they push you and they motivate you in ways that you probably don't do whenever you're just by yourself. So I think that really like spending that money if you have it and if you can, then that's a great way to do it. If you don't have money available, maybe try looking into free classes. I know that in the past I had taken some like free yoga classes that were like more donation based. So they don't expect as much money as you would have to pay at like a proper yoga studio. I think I would pay like $10 a class, which is like super, super reasonable. And that was generally what most people there paid. So just like look for those kinds of opportunities, really find something or some way to hold yourself accountable. Maybe you just invite a couple of your friends to go with you, but just finding those ways to schedule in the time that you're gonna go work out or go do something makes it so much easier to do it. And also if you're having fun, then that's gonna make you wanna keep doing it. My next habit is that I always make sure that I call a friend 
or a family member or my boyfriend every single day. If any of you guys are also in your post-grad era, then you know how difficult it is to kind of transition into that and how you're kind of starting out on your own. If you're like me, then you've moved to a whole new place. You don't know that many people and you're not really around the same people that you've spent the past like few years of your life with. And so for me, being able to call these people, kind of reminisce, just talk about things, just have those normal conversations that I've been so used to having, it helps me to feel like more myself and more like the version of myself that I want to be and more in tune with memories and things and people that I really love and that I want to be around. And so even if I can't be around them physically, I do try to get in that every single day calling somebody, usually somebody different. I mean, obviously I call like my family and my boyfriend more often than friends, but I do try to get that in as well. Next, I think that it's really important to do something creative every day. I think that this can be anything. For me, sometimes it's just as simple as I will make my page in my bullet journal a little bit fancier using calligraphy, or maybe I'm like making a video or editing a video, or maybe I'm editing an Instagram picture. Those are all ways that I feel like I can be creative. Sometimes when I'm at work, it's just a matter of, you know, designing a PowerPoint a little bit differently to make it pretty. Things like that where you are just using that creative side of your brain every once in a while is really good. Maybe it's cooking a new meal or trying out something brand new in the kitchen. Any of those kinds of things can be a way of being creative and it just means that you are thinking about life and things and trying to figure out new ways to do things and I think that that is a really good exercise for your mind. Okay, another lifestyle habit that honestly, I'm really in a good habit of doing this and I'm really glad I do this. I also don't know if this is like a weird thing to do or a completely normal thing to do, but I didn't grow up doing this by any means. And that is any time that I take out the trash, I wipe down my trash can with like a Clorox wipe or something, or like I spray it and I clean it. And the reason I do this is just because of smells, honestly, but also, I know that my mom used to always complain about having to clean the trash can every once in a while when it got really gross, but I just feel like by doing this, like every single time I change my trash, my trash can is like super clean, <laughs> which is silly to say, but I think that it just adds a little bit of less stress because I know that I don't have to worry about like having to deep clean my trash can at any point in time because I'm just doing it on a regular basis. Kind of going along with that, getting into more of like the evening things that I like to do. First of all, I always do like the closing shift in the apartment. So I always make sure that I clean all of my dishes, put all of my dishes away. I want my kitchen to be nice and tidy and clean. I always like make my lunch the night before if I'm going to work, lay my clothes out, doing all of those kinds of things just to like set my day up for success the next day. I hate doing things in the morning. As I said before, I'm not a morning person. The less I need to do in the morning, the better. So getting it all done at night before I go to sleep just means that I wake up and I feel so like refreshed and I'm like, this is a new day. There's nothing left really on my plate in terms of like at least cleaning my apartment in the morning. So I don't have to worry about any of that. And so that just means I can get on with my day without having to think about that. Next, every night I do try really hard to journal and I have done this since high school. I have... You know what, I'll even show you. So I have this really little journal that I have had basically a style of this since I started journaling whenever I was like a sophomore in high school. I just get these from Barnes & Noble. It's Pizza Pulpa Press. And I just write one page in here every single day right before I go to sleep. Sometimes I'll just like write a list of things that I need to do. Sometimes I will go into detail about my day. Sometimes it'll just be what's ever on my mind I just use this as a place where I can get all of those thoughts out of my head before I go to sleep. I really love doing this too because it just means like I have all of these memories of thoughts that I've had for so many years and it's really really cool to look back on. Along with that, something I also really like is meditation. I also have kind of been a meditation girl since I was in like high school. Um, I use the app Headspace. The guy who narrates the meditations, I prefer the guy over the girl because the guy's voice is just so soothing and relaxing. I do this right before I go to sleep every night. Um, sometimes I do fall asleep during the meditation, but most of the time it just helps to kind of like empty my mind before I go to sleep and I can relax and it just helps me to like decompress right before I go to bed, which is what I really like about it. It only takes like 10 minutes. Like I said, I use the app Headspace. I think that it's a great app, um, really, really useful. I do pay the subscription, but I know like the first like 
30 basic ones I think are free. So every single day they have a new like daily meditation that focuses around some theme and so I really like to do those. I am also kind of working my way through the Headspace 365 which is just a year of meditations. Um, if I don't like the like daily one, then I'll just use like the 365 one. Because um, the 365 one is like helping you learn how to meditate, whereas the other one is kind of like focusing on a specific topic, whatever. But they have some great courses. During college, I used it a lot. It had some like good stress ones, some about being lonely. If you're going through a breakup, there's like breakup ones. So there's just such a good variety on there. And I feel like it just really, really helped me to get through some tough times in my life, so I swear by it. My last habit that I want to talk about is kind of not really to do with any of like my daily things, but more like whenever I go away on a trip, even if it's just for a weekend, which I tend to do a lot because I like go visit my friends, whatever, um, I always, always, always do a full cleaning routine before I leave. Like I scrub my whole apartment, like I do the full like Sunday reset, I try to do my laundry, I try to vacuum everywhere, mop, whatever it is that's on like the schedule for that week. I always do that before I leave, not when I get back. That just means that whenever I get back, again, it's like kind of why I like to do all my cleaning at night. It's like when I get back, I don't want to be worrying about that because there's always other emotions. After I come back from a trip, I'm always usually a little bit down and sad. And the last thing that I want to do is clean an entire apartment. So the next thing that I want to talk about is how to start implementing these kinds of habits into your life and how to make them consistent because we know that these are only so good as long as you're actually keeping them up and doing them on a regular basis. The first thing is whenever you're trying to start a new habit, always use positive wording instead of negative wording. So instead of saying, I will not go to bed until the entire kitchen is clean every night, what you would want to say is, every night before I go to bed, I will have a clean kitchen. It's as simple as that. It's just a way of thinking about things so that they're positive instead of negative. Next, don't bite off more than you can chew. There are so many good ideas in the world of things that you can do to add to your habits and to do on a regular basis. But let's be real, if we really started adding every single one of those, we'd spend the whole day doing them and we wouldn't have time for anything else. So what I think is really important to do is that you should start with like one habit at a time. I think that building up and focusing on maybe one or two of your primary focused habits is gonna help you a lot more in the long run. So maybe you really wanna get into journaling. So let's say that you start journaling for a little while and you do that for a month. And that is the one habit that you're like, absolutely, I'm going to be doing this every single day. After a month, it's gonna be a habit. So then at that point, maybe you start to add in something else. Maybe you say, I'm going to journal and then I'm going to meditate. And so you start doing that and you focus on doing that meditation every single time, but you know it always comes after like your journaling practice. So in that case, you're going to lump those things together and you're going to keep on doing them and they're going to become a habit over time because you didn't bite off more than you can chew. It can be a lot to sit there and be like, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes journaling and then I'm going to spend 30 minutes meditating and then I'm going to go to this workout class that's too much. Take your time with things, there's no rush, you'll get it all done, you'll add these habits to your repertoire, but just give it time to develop. On top of that also, like build things up as well, like keep a note of what you want to be doing and start adding those things into, have a cadence you add these things into. Maybe every single month you pick a new habit to focus on, so you already have a list of those ideas and you can pick from that list whatever is most important to you at that point to add into your daily habits. Going back to that whole idea of like it being a positive thing, reward yourself when you're doing a good job. And I also think that these rewards should be often, in my opinion. I think that it can be really easy to fall off of things at the beginning. So maybe you say, okay, after one day, if I do this thing tomorrow, if I go sign up for this workout class and I go, then afterwards I'm gonna get a coffee, whatever it is. And then you say, okay, maybe after I do two more of these workout classes, I'm gonna treat myself by going and buying a cake for myself. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Like build up your rewards for yourself in small increments so that you really are forcing yourself to attend to those habits and to really build them up. Also though, going along with that, remember that you should take time off if you need time off. Like. Sometimes there are cases where you cannot do these habits and if you are trying to do these habits then it's going to take away from whatever it is that you are doing. 
for example, for me, like if I'm going away on a weekend, I very rarely journal or meditate or do any of that kind of thing because I'm like hanging out with friends. There's things going on that I can't anticipate. And those habits become more of a chore for me that I don't want to do. And I think in that case, it's really important to be honest with yourself and just be like, okay, then I'm not gonna do them right now. But Monday's always gonna come and you're gonna be able to restart those habits again. Now that being said, don't wait for Mondays. If you do fall off and you feel like you have lost it, you can always pick it up again. Like you don't have to wait for the start of a new month, the start of a new week. If you need to, if you're in a situation like I just said, where it just doesn't make sense, it's not feasible for you, then yeah, wait, give it the time that you need. But don't make excuses for yourself either. I think that there's a very fine line there, but only you know where that line is. So just be healthy with it. Okay, you guys, that was everything that I wanted to talk about in this video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope that you got some inspiration from this. And if you did, then make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.